In the very early 1990s, the BBC in the UK started to re-air a lot of old Thunderbirds episodes. These nostalgic reruns definitely reinvigorated interest in the TV show, and indeed most of Gerry Anderson's super marionation TV shows, that is to say, the TV shows which used puppets. And very soon after, there followed repeats of Captain Scarlet and Stingray. Now, Stingray is probably one of the lesser known of Jerry Anderson's creations back in the 60s, but it was still fairly successful for its time. It did run for 39 consecutive episodes, and it did manage to make its mark in the popular culture, due in no small part to the theme song and the fantastic design of the vehicles. And with this renewed interest in all of these TV shows, toy company Matchbox were quick to capitalise and make sure that new play sets and new toys were available. The most famous of these is undoubtedly the Tracy Island playset for Thunderbirds, but they also made a playset for Stingray. And so today on Flashback Fridays, I'm going to take us all the way back to 1992 and look at the Stingray Marineville headquarters from Matchbox. So starting off by looking at the packaging, hopefully you'll agree that this is pretty nice artwork. I love uh, illustrated packaging like this and I think this is really fantastic. It's really bright, it's very colourful and it is action packed. We can see lots of explosions, we can see jets flying overhead and of course we can see the stingray shooting out uh, under the water there. Uh, this looks absolutely fantastic to me. I think it's really evocative and uh, yeah a lot of fun. So I, I, I love this front of the packaging. I think it's really really excellent. On the side panel of this very chunky box we can see a photo of the toy on display but if we look a little bit closer we can actually see there's some other toys in this stingray line so not only do we have the play set and of course the vehicles but we've also got an action figure line as well and then finally on the reverse we have the best of both worlds because we actually have a photo of the play set again in action uh, mode where we can see some of the action features at play and they've dressed it very nicely with the the, the surrounding diorama to make this really exciting uh, so i think whatever your preference is you're covered here and i think this looks absolutely great now the playset itself is quite compact and quite quite small compared to the tracy island playset which is quite a large set uh, this is much smaller it's also a lot simpler in its construction, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's something to be said for something that is compact, that can sit nicely on the shelf, and it's still very colourful and bright, and it looks pretty authentic to what we see on screen. Admittedly, the reverse of the place that leaves a little something to be desired. It is quite blank, especially those two big blank white squares there, which is a, a little bit distracting, a bit of a shame that the detail didn't go all the way to the back here. But again, not a huge concern, considering most of the play was going to be taking place in the front. And all in all, it's quite attractive. I like a lot of the use of the colours here. It's quite bright, it's quite colourful, it's quite interesting to look at, and there's tons of little details to come, mainly from the stickers, which add a lot of depth and texture to this playset. At the top there, we have the very colourful red and blue watchtower, which is really nicely done. And then underneath, we have those sort of office spaces, which again, have individual windows, which is quite nicely done, little railings there. And then at the bottom on the base, we have patches of what is green lawn, and there's even a little security booth with cartoon images of people in there, which I think is a nice touch. And then this is actually continued at the top of the tower as well. As we spin around, we can see that each window has a different figure or face in it. There's, some, there's a chap there looking out with binoculars, there's someone working at the desk. I think this is quite nicely done. And although it is repeated a handful of times, it is very colourful, it is nicely done, and these stickers have managed to stay in place all these years, which is great. And then of course we can actually lift the top of the dome off to see the inner workings of the control tower. And once again, this is very nicely done. It is simple with just stickers, but it makes a world of difference because we can see all those different controls there, we can see some of the screens in the background, and this looks really fun and exciting. In. All we really need now is some minifigures to put in here and you'd have a really nice set. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the headquarters, we have obviously the underwater section. So we have that big stone slab there, which is quite cool. Uh, again, looks pretty pretty textured. You can actually see lots of little ripples running through it, which is quite nice. Of course, we have the two giant wasp uh, missiles on either side. And then in the background, again, we have a very straightforward sticker but it adds so much depth and texture to this place that it's it's fantastic so we can see all the inner workings at the background of the factory there which looks really cool 
Now, the playset only has a handful of features, but it is quite fun because, of course, it is a transforming playset. So the central column can <laughs> snap down so it sinks down uh, into its safety mode, hiding beneath the ocean. Now, this is actually locked into place with plastic hooks, so I would caution you that when you are forcing it down, you have to apply a fair amount of pressure and it can feel like you're about to destroy the entire playset. So uh, I would watch out for that. Of course, the other main feature of the playset is the missile silo, which you can lift these missiles up from the base and they slide all the way up above ground and then they lock into position. Naturally, you can do this with both sides. So in the end, you have the base safely secure under the water and of course, uh, the defense missiles ready to launch. And you can very easily just lift the rockets off uh, to create that blast off effect. Now, it's a shame there isn't actually a mechanism to fire them off. That would have been really cool if they'd been spring loaded. But nevertheless, this is probably a safer way. And we can take a closer look at the rockets there. So as you can see, obviously not a lot of detail on them, but then there wasn't in the show to be fair. But we do have the nice red uh, clear wasp lettering on there, which is great. They are hollow inside. And then the top of the uh, missile head actually comes off as well. So you can break away and fire that missile into uh, any enemy ships or tanks or whatever the threat of the day is. And I have to say, I think the playset looks at its best when the missile's in that fully uh, ready launch position, and of course the command tower is at the top there as well, because it just looks more full, it just looks a bit more interesting and a bit more colourful, and we can really see uh, the background underneath the water there, I think that's a really nice design. So all in all, I think this is the sort of the default for me personally, although I'm aware that this probably isn't strictly canon to what we see in the TV show. Now, just like the Thunderbirds line from Matchbox, the vehicles are sold separately, and we have two ships in this line. We have the Stingray, and we have the Terrorfish. Thankfully, both of these come double packed, so you can get them both simultaneously and add them to your playset. And again, this is very nicely designed. I think the card art on here is, is beautiful, really very evocative, really nicely illustrated. We can see those ships uh, flying by over there. We can see the effect that the vehicles are actually jumping up out of the water and splashing down. I think it's just really, really fun. And of course, in the background, we can see the headquarters. Uh, again, really nicely painted, very striking image. And then on the back, Again, we have another advert for the other toys that are available in this line. And these ships are die cast with plastic parts. And I have to say, I have great affection for this Stingray model. I've always loved the design of this ship. There's just something that's very, very 60s about it. It's very aquatic as well. Uh, and it just, I just love how streamlined it is and how smooth those lines are. It just looks fantastic. So I, I love this. I love the colors of it. And I think they've done a really nice job of this die cast model as well. And it feels fairly weighty in your hand because most of it is, of course, uh, metal. So it's fantastic. Now, one of the features it does have is is it actually has a rotating plastic propeller, which is really, really cool. I had a lot of fun with this when I was a kid, and uh, just little things like that make all the difference. So I love this ship. I think it's very, very nicely designed. I think it did originally have its periscope at the top there, but unfortunately, as we can see through lots of play, mine has snapped off. But all in all, very nicely produced. Likewise, the Terrorfish is very nicely designed. A lot of fun, big giant fish ship, I think is, uh, is a great idea. Love those big boggle eyes as well, it's fantastic. Now, the head of this is the die cast part. The rest of it is just a, a plastic. Uh, you may notice it actually has two fins, and I've never been sure. These actually move up and down. I always felt like they were linked to the jaw because the jaw moves up and down as well. But I think this actually might be controlled by just merely the weight, depending on how you balance the ship. But all in all, it's, it is a a lot of fun it's very nice it looks great and uh, it is nice that it actually has that hinge jaw as well because it will open its mouth and close it which again as a kid this was a lot of fun <laughs> so i really like this and i've still got a lot of affection for it and so we come to the final feature of the playset, where of course there is that trap door that you can just lift up and of course you can send the Stingray through off to its various missions. Uh, so of course it fits through there perfectly, it fits like a glove and it looks really, really good. And then it's very easy to just slide that shutter down and close it off. So all in all, this is pretty fun. I think they've done a very nice job of this. I think it would be interesting to introduce some of the Thunderbirds uh, toys as well to see how they scale <laughs> and whether you can actually build a cross universe in your toys. That would be quite fun. 
So, final thoughts then. Uh, yeah, I have loads of affection for this playset. It's very, very fun. It's interesting looking back now as an adult, because it does seem to actually be fairly limited in some of the things that they've op chosen to do with it. I think there could have been more, like I said, there could have been spring-loaded rockets. That would have been a really fun feature. Or even just the use of sound effects, as we saw in the Tracy Island playset. And it is remarkable how much of this the fun of this place is actually achieved through the stickers uh, that adds that extra dimension because without it i think it would look quite flat uh, but i think they've done a very very nice job of it and yeah i i'm still very fond of it to this day if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon